Greetings YouTube! Today I'll be doing another uh, bargain video and we're going to start out here over in books. We have The Mystic Warriors of the Plains by Thomas E. Uh, Males. The culture, art, crafts, religion of the Plains Indians profusely illustrated and it is. It's full of um, not just color plates but also lots of sketch style uh, descriptions of their uh, clothing, their technology, their weapons missile weapons and hand weapons and things like that which are all of great interest to me and I picked this up for three bucks it's a very large book it's a very big book um, and in 1972 when it was printed it was 25 bucks so I don't even know how much it would cost in uh, 2014 dollars but that was a good buy that's a good one um, then we have a walk across America by Peter Jenkins and this was written when the author was 22 years old and he left and started walking across America over a five-year period with his dog Cooper. Um, and uh, this was the first book he wrote, and he's written a number of them since then. And I am currently reading his book, Along the Edge of America, which deals with his travels in a 25-foot boat along the Gulf Coast, which he had to learn how to pilot. He never had owned a boat before. And that's kind of like in a post-divorce period of his life. So I kind of want to see where he was, where he was when he started out in his career of adventuring. So there you have it. Uh, no kids, just him and a dog out in the roads. Much different than being a divorced guy into his second marriage with four children and two stepkids. Much different. Um, then we have Rubbish, the archaeology of garbage. Because what people throw away fascinates me. I'm very much a uh, one man's uh, garbage is another man's treasure. You know, trash and treasure kind of concept. Then we have Thunderstruck, which is by the same author as The Devil in the White City, which is an excellent book, and I have and I have reviewed that book here on my channel, and that dealt with a serial killer and um, the World's Fair in Chicago. And this deals with uh, Marconi, the person that was attributed to the invention of the radio, who actually was not the inventor of the radio, that would be um, Nikola Tesla, and another killer. So the author likes linking killers and inventors or, or, or inventions and such together. Um, so that's kind of an interesting combination. I really liked Devil in the in the White City, so I'm looking forward to this one. I found that for a quarter today. Um, then we have uh, John Green's Looking for Alaska. That's my wife's, so that's not mine. And then we have The Phantom Tollbooth, and that is for my nephews, also not mine. And do I do have a copy of this, and I haven't read it yet. I need to read it. It's the only book of fiction in my entire collection, which I actually plan on reading at any time in the future. Um, then we have Literature and the Gods, um, which is about how the divine has been used in literature to, and how those, to how its use in uh, prose and poetry has impacted culture at large. Um, I feel bad. I picked up four books that I'm going to read and then one, well, and one reference book. The reference book will go into my weapons library, but I feel bad about the other ones. I'm trying to pare things down and that failed. On the plus side, I will get rid of all of these books when I'm done reading them. And these two aren't mine. Yay! Um, then we have some movies. We have Ralph Boxy's Lord of the Rings, uh, Clerks 2, and I actually have a copy of Clerks 2 at the moment, but it is not the two disc uh, edition. And so I got this one for a buck, and I'm going to get rid of the other one. So I'm at net zero uh, films, the one extra discs. And we have um, the two DV, two disc a deluxe edition of The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. I've never seen this, ever. Um, I enjoyed the first two films, the first one far more than the second one, mind you, because um, the second one defies how shadows and sunlight work in the real world. But uh, I wanted to see this one because... Um, that's an adventure thing, you know? Indiana Jones kind of vibe. Um, then we have a brass bowl, which I picked up today, and it's really wonderfully heavy. It has a wonderful vibe to it. It almost looks like a shell on the bottom. I don't know if that was the intent of the uh, producer or not, but it's really a nice in, in, in a nice weight to it and shape. Um, I actually don't know what to do with it yet, but it's nice, and it was a good price. We have a couple of small glass ornaments. It's my tradition to always give glass ornaments to the mother mothers at Christmas. So there we go. And then we have this, and this is actually new. It's a hand mirror I bought for my wife because my wife likes owls and she likes that kind of stylistic aesthetic right there. So I picked it up for two bucks. So that would be all in my book. Um, then we have this large 
percussion instrument. This is actually not a bell in the conventional sense. There is no clapper inside. Um, this is designed to be struck with a, um, uh, a drumstick or something else. It is called uh, Joppa Custom Made Latin, Afro, and Brazilian Percussion. Um, so this is designed to be played by a musician. And I saw it, it was $2, and I'm like, my wife loves bells, and this is a bell. So we did that, and we got this one today. And we liked the sound, and we also liked the shape. It's an unusual shape. It's probably just a, you know, an Indian piece. So it's, you know, out of something uh, for the tourists, things like that. But still, it has a nice nice ring to it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And uh, a nice shape. Um, then we have a vase, which I put into my collection. And I'm up zero, because I just got rid of one. Um, but I really like this shape. And uh, it's got a texture to it. I don't know if you can really pick up that texture right in there in the, in the camera, but it's got a nice texture to it. It has a nice physical feel to it. That's nice. And this is a flower pot I got for my wife. Um, some kind of, some amateur, because you can tell the glazing wasn't perfect, but they had a, had a nice eye and they did a pretty decent job. So she'll use this as a flower pot. So that was nice. Um, then we have a figure, which we'll get a full review at some point in the future. Um, Todd McFarlane Rotar, I think, I think is what this thing's called. It is supposed to have a rotary blade on top. Uh, that it didn't, and I didn't care. Um, I thought it was cool. It made me think it would make an awesome. I think it's a good alien illustration. Whoops! Get him to stand up for me. There we go. Uh, good alien or a mutant. Either one that way. He, he would be having a nice illustration for a game. And then we have a, we have a bundle of four forks, which is for a uh, a uh, an art project I'm planning. No, uh, no spoilers there. If I ever get around to it, you folks will be involved. And then we have this. Now this, I purchased new. It's a handmade ladle. And I really like the shape. And I like the burling on this. And that pattern is really nice. It's made out of olive wood. And it was 19 bucks, which isn't cheap. But for handmade um, ladle, it isn't actually a bad price at all. And I really liked it. It has a nice feel to it. And I will be using this um, as, as a tool in my, in my house when I want to ladle things. Um, but now we have two ladles. We have a cheap plastic one, which we keep around in case we need to take it somewhere. Now we have a nice one we can use here in the house. So that's kind of kind of a good thing. And I will now cut to the second segment of this video. Welcome back. So the second section of the video is going to be dealing with some uh, both some tools and some clothing. So we have, we'll start over here, what the heck. Um, we have a set of carpenter shorts for myself, which I picked up for five bucks at Savers. Oddly, there are 35. And depending on the cut of pants, I wear even a 34 or a 36 normally. 35 fit perfectly, so maybe I'm a 35, who knows. But there you go, five bucks for a pair of shorts. Um, we have a top from Enema. Um, everything is nothing, nothing is everything. Which is uh, brand new, never worn. My wife picked it up at a shop for 10 bucks. And it's uh, kind of got a vaguely see-through vibe going on there. Nice color. It'll should it's slightly clingy, so even though it's a medium, it'll fit it perfectly. Um, then I have a very simple volt detector. I have a Klein tester to see if a circuit is live or not, um, which is useful, and I use it all the time. Um, recommend you check any plug or circuit before you play with it. Make sure it's, whether it's live or not. Uh, but I figured I'd, I could step it up a little and maybe learn about how to use one of these things. And I picked it up for two bucks at a yard sale. Um, then we have this, which is a chest light. And you wear it around your neck, and then you take these loops and you put them into your belt so it sits firmly against your chest. And yes, it does in fact work. It doesn't put a lot of light out. These there, there are not a whole lot of lumens in this particular uh, flashlight, and it is fairly heavy. It uses two D cells. Interestingly, in the inside it says use two flashlight batteries, because at the time essentially there was only one type of flashlight battery, and that was a D cell. Uh, all metal construction. The only part that isn't is the uh, strap itself, and uh, you pop this top off, and the back folds open. You take the batteries in or out. Uh, I'll be taking them out after I do this film, uh, video because the last someone who owned it at one time didn't and they exploded, but it still works. Um, then we have a uh, a foil, an actual foil. I think this is a youth foil. It's not very big, um, but I never owned one, and uh, now I do. It's got that very highly ergonomic grip. Um, so I add that to my weapon collection. And then we have this bar, and I gotta be honest with you, I don't know what this thing is. This table is about 24 inches long, so that it's 
fairly big. It's the same width as the table is. I've got a large steel ball. This is solid, solid steel shaft, and it comes to. Let me get you the. Let me get, there we go. Comes to a chisel edge here, and it doesn't have any real chips or anything in it, and it doesn't really have any hammer marks here. So I'm not sure what this thing was really designed to do. I picked it for two bucks, but I I picked it up mostly because well, it's a pry bar, and I can use it for I can use it to pry things apart. But uh, it's a great impact tool. Two-handed, heavy. I mean, you're gonna hit something, it's gonna be stay hit. Um, then we have an Irwin three-eighths inch drill bit, which is 18 inches long, and I got that for 850 brand new. Um, I actually have a project in the near future I'd like to do that will entail me drilling a deep hole and this will go deeper than any drill but I've got and it's 3 8 which is a good good diameter also this would be a perfect thing for drilling holes through walls for cable I have a quarter inch hole a drill for that but frankly it's not quite big enough and when the guy cable guy came to my house to put in to install it even though I had already drilled the holes for him with a quarter inch bit even right through a wall because I have a 12 inch bit he used a 3 8 inch he went he went higher than that so um, this would also be useful for that. So there you go. Just make sure you don't drill into any wires. That would be bad. Or tubes for water and things like that. Um, then I have a Stanley. Let me go. Here we go. Stanley 24 ounce Mason's hammer, which I picked up for 10 bucks used. And it has a really nice patina on the on on here, and I like that. As as I've said to other people before in videos, old tools have a certain vibe to them, and I really appreciate it. And I saw online that new ones for these were going for 45 bucks. So for 10 bucks, I don't think I can lose on that one. Then we have an Eaton. Um, this is the LL Bean brand version of an uh, FRX1. There's a number of different models of this. This is hand crank, has a, a retractable antenna, has an on and off light, uh, and it does in fact get That's the radio, it's the weather channel, weather band. Hard to hear without the antenna, but it does work. Um, and it picks up some decent stations and having a, a dedicated switch for the weather band is very important in an emergency. Um, I'll be doing a full review of that at some point in the future. And then we have a Carpenter Square. Uh, I, don't, I had one of these in the past, it was my grandfather's, but after the fire um, that I survived, I and my cats and my library made, made it through, I left it behind. I didn't realize I'd left it behind until a couple of years later. Um, and I picked this up at a yard sale for two bucks. So I now have a, a carpenter square I can use. Always handy to have a large square around when you need it. I have a speed square somewhere. I just got to find it. I'm not 100% sure where I put it. Yeah, I just need more space for my tools. But we're working on that. At some point in the future, I want to build a tool bench. Yes, I do. Um, that would be going in my basement. So there you go. Tools, electronic gadgets, um, some clothes. Overall, pretty cool. Particularly as I, I got myself a foil.